Hey there, it's Janet Magic Myers, and we are on to our second part of section 3.2 from the Zill text. We are looking at an example involving chemical mixtures, so it's like a chemical reaction type problem. Two chemicals A and B are combined to form a chemical C. The rate or velocity of the reaction is proportional to the product of the instantaneous amounts of A and B not converted to chemical C. Initially, there are 40 grams of A and 50 grams of B, and for each gram of B, 2 grams of A is used. It is observed that 10 grams of C is formed in 5 minutes. How much is formed in 20 minutes? And what is the limiting amount of C after a long time? All right, so let's get started. And how much of chemicals A and B remains after a long time? So... This one has a lot going on, all right? So basically, one way to look at it is that we have a lot of information, right? So we have some, you know, initial amount of A, call it A sub zero, and that's 40 grams. B sub zero was 50 grams. Now, for each one gram of B, two grams of A is added to this mixture. So if you think about it like a ratio, then each time you add one portion of B, you add two portions of A, and the whole of it is what you get for this chemical C, all right? So if we were to go ahead and let X, which is equal to X at T, and this is going to be the amount of the chemical C at time T, then you have a situation where for every two parts of A, right, the total number of boxes that makes up C is, is three. And so with a chemical reaction, you basically have, um, you, you wanna think about what's the amount of A left, or sorry, A0, left at time T. Well, A is comprised of two-thirds of C, because for every two parts of A, you put one part of B, and that makes up all of C, right? So we'll get this relationship where 3A equals 2C. And then similarly, if we look at the amount of B0 left at time T, B would be one third of C. And so for every three Bs, you have one C. Cool so far? All right. So continuing, I think we've got enough to go on here. The general model for a reaction is dx dt is equal to some constant k times the amount that you have left of A0 at time t, right, which in our case is triple A0 minus 2x, right, because x is the amount in time t for our c, and then times 3B0 
minus 1 times x. I just use these proportions here, substituting in x for c because x is more efficient because it gives you the amount of c left at time t. So, substituting in what we have for a0 and b0, we'll have 3 times 40 minus 2x, and then times 3 times 50 minus x, which will be 120 minus 2x's times 150 minus 1x. Cool so far? So it's starting to shape up a bit, right? All right, so now we need to solve this differential equation. So do you see that it is separable? So we have dx over the quantity 120 minus 2x times 150 minus x equals k dt. Now we've got to do a little math magic here by performing the partial fraction decomposition um, in order to do the uh, left-hand side integral. So I'll just do this down here. So we basically have 1 over 120 minus 2x times 150 minus x. And it, there, it's already factored, so you'll get a over 120 minus 2x plus b over 150 minus x. So this is our partial fraction decomp. So now getting a common denominator, I won't have to keep writing that denominator. So we'll have 1 is equal to a times quantity 150 minus x plus b times quantity 120 minus 2x. Continuing, this gives us 150a minus a times x plus 120b minus 2 times b times x. Now I'll add in a 0x so that, because I have terms that have x's in them, and I'm going to group them together. So we will have negative a minus 2b, that whole quantity times x, and then we'll have 150a plus 120b grouped to equate to the constant. So I'm going to equate the coefficients and then we will have negative a minus 2b is equal to 0. That gives us a plus 2b is 0 multiplying by negative 1 on both sides, so a is negative 2b. Now using the other equation which is 150a plus 120b equals 1, and then plugging in what I found for a, which was negative 2b, this will give us negative 300b plus 120b is equal to 1, and that is negative 180b is 1, and so b is negative 1 over 180. Good so far? So plugging this back into a, a will in turn be equal to negative 2 times b, so it ends up being negative 2 times negative 1 over 180, 
and then A will be positive 1 over 90. All right, so I will rewrite the left-hand side as 1 over 90 was my A, and A was over 120 minus 2X. There was a negative 1 over 180 for our B, and that was multiplied to 150 minus X. So all of that is in place of this left-hand side. And then, don't forget, it's equal to K times T. So now, let's check it out. We are lacking a negative 2 in order to differentiate this first one because if I did u equals 120 minus 2x, du would be negative 2 dx. So I've got my dx, I need the negative 2. So I need to multiply by negative 1 half to balance it out. On the second term, I'm lacking a negative 1, and so I'm going to turn that negative sign to a plus to adapt for it. So now I'll get negative 1 over 180 times natural log absolute 120 minus 2x plus 1 over 180 times natural log absolute 150 minus x equals, and my apologies, I did that in my head. I should have just kept it as k, k dt because I'm, I'm going to integrate both sides. And this will give us k times t plus some constant, call it constant 1. Now, if I multiply both sides by 180, I'll get negative natural log absolute 120 minus 2x plus natural log absolute 150 minus x is equal to 180 kt plus some new constant, 180 times constant 1 gives me constant 2. And then combining the logs, because I want to get this in terms of x, x equals something. So I'll have the natural log, absolute, the positive is the 150 minus x over 120 minus 2x, that's going to equal to 180 times k times t plus some constant, c2. And then we will have 150 minus x over 120 minus 2x equals e raised to the 180 times kt plus c2. That, in turn, gives us I took the absolute value bars off because it's equal to an exponential, which is positive. So this will equal to e to the 180 times k times t times e raised to the c2 using properties of exponents. And that e raised to the c2 is just another constant. So we'll call this C3 e to the 180k times t. Pretty cool, huh? At time zero, there won't be anything of any part of C, right? The, the compound C. So x at zero equals zero. So utilizing this, 
I'll have 150 minus 0 over 120 minus 2 times 0 is equal to equals C3 E to the 180 times K times 0. And so 150 over 120 is equal to C3, which reduces to 5 fourths is C3. Cool so far? So now, bringing back our function, we, we keep getting more, more parts to it, we are going to have 150 minus x over 120 minus 2x is equal to 5 fourths e to the 180 kt. Cool so far? Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, start isolating our x. So if I multiply both sides by 120 minus 2x, I'll get 150 minus x is equal to 5 fourths e to the 180 times k times t times the quantity 120 minus 2x. And 150 minus x will be equal to so let's see, 5 fourths times 120, I believe, will be 150. And we have e to the 180 times k times t. And then distributing through to the minus 2x, we'll have minus 5 halves x e to the 180 times k times t. And then getting the x's on one side and everything else on the other, we'll have 5 halves x e to the 180 times k times t minus x equals negative 150 plus 150e to the 180 times k times t. Good so far? Awesome. All right, so now let's factor out the x. We're left with 5 halves e to the 180 times k times t, and then minus 1. And that's equal to negative 150 plus 150e to the 180 times k times t. Dividing both sides to isolate the x, we will have, I'm going to just factor out a negative 150 from the numerator. And then I'll have 1 minus e to the 180 times k times t over 5 halves e to the 180 times k times t minus 1. Cool so far? All right. And then continuing. Let's see what we have for our x. So I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator just to simplify in that bottom expression. So x would be equal to negative 150, 1 minus e to the 180 kt over 5e to the 180 kt minus 2 all over 2. And continuing, that 2 will flip up, multiply to the negative 150 to get negative 300 times 1 minus e to the 180 times k times t 
all over 5 e to the 180 times k times t minus 2. Good so far? Awesome. Now we have everything except for our k, right? So let's use an initial condition to find k. So here, do you see in the purple, we've, for every 10 grams of C, um, that's formed in five minutes. So we have the ordered pair five, 10. And so X, we'll put in 10 for X. And we'll have that equal to negative 300 times 1 minus e to the 180 k times 5 for t all over 5 e to the 180 k times 5 minus 2. So it looks kind of ugly, but we'll be able to get an approximation. So 10 is going to equal to, okay, so we will have negative 300 times 1 minus e to the, let's see, 5 times 180 is, 5 times 180 is 900. So we'll have 900K over 5E to the 900K minus 2. Good so far? And now we want to get those exponentials together. So let's just work with this. So we're going to have 10 times 5e to the 900k minus 2, that quantity, is equal to, I'm going to just, well, you know what, we'll do one thing first. Negative 300 times 1 minus e to the 900k. I can divide out a 10 on the left, and I'll be left with a negative 30 on the right. So we'll have 5e to the 900k minus 2 is equal to negative 30, I'm distributing now, plus 30e to the 900k. And now let's add 30 to both sides to get 28 on the left and subtract 5e to the 900k. So we, these are like terms, right, even though they look complicated. So we'll have 25e to the 900k, which will give us 28 over 25 is equal to e raised to the 900k. Natural log 28 25 is equal to 900k. And let's figure out what k is approximately. So natural log 28 divided by 25 and then divided by 900 is approximately 0 0.00011. Nine. Cool, cool? All right, we'll keep a lot of digits for that K. So now, continuing, what do we have for X? X is going to be negative 300 times 1 minus E to the 180 
let's figure out what is 180 times this K that we found. So 180 times 0.0001259 is approximately 0 0.022662. n times t, that's going to be over 5e to the 0 0.022662t minus 2. Good so far? Awesome, awesome. All right, so now um, we are tasked with finding out how much of the compound will be used in, I think, 20 minutes? Is that what it was? Formed in 20 minutes, formed in 20. Okay, so if we call this exit T, just to make it more informative, we now want to find out what is X at 20. So wherever there's a T, we'll plug in 20. X at 20 is negative 300 times one minus, so let's see, I'm gonna go times 20, enter. So we'll get E raised to the 0 0.45324 over 5E raised to the 0 0.45324, and that comes from plugging in 20 for T, okay? So I don't have to rewrite all this stuff. So in for T, I put 20. And then that's gonna be equal to, so let's see what we get negative 300 times one minus E raised to the 0 0.45324 parentheses divided by, oops, and I forgot my minus two divided by quantity five times second e to the 0 0.45324 minus two, end parentheses, enter. And so at time 20, we'll have approximately, this is all approximate now, 29.3 grams of compound C, all right? Now, they wanted us to also find what? Way back, <laughs> yes, they're long. They, they want us to take a look and say, okay, how much of chemical, let's see, what is the limiting amount of C after a long time? And then how much of chemicals A and B remain, all right, um, after a long time? Okay, so let's go ahead and start highlighting the things that we found. So how much is formed in 20 minutes? Was this one? And then next up, we're looking at what is the limiting amount of C after a long time? Okay, so, well, a long time means we send T to infinity, right? So looking at our regular X at T, we would say the limit as T approaches infinity of X at T equals, well, if you take a look at this, you're gonna end up 
you're going to end up with um, infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule, right? Because we got infinity over infinity. And so this is equivalent to the limit as t approaches infinity of x prime at t, which is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of. So the, th the negative 300 will go along for the ride, right? And then when I differentiate 1 minus e raised to the, all that stuff, I'm going to get negative 0 0.022662 times e to the 0 0.022662t. That's the numerator. And then the denominator, the minus 2 will zero out, and I'll be left with the 5. The 5 is going to end up being or sorry, the, the, and I'll still have that exponential, e to the 0 0.022662t. And then, look at that. L'Hopital's real nice. The exponential term divides out, and the numerator will get negative 1 because of that negative symbol. And then, when we simplify, using direct substitution, or just what it's simplified to, we get 60. So over time, right, that limiting factor would be 60 grams. Cool, cool? And then the last little bit, okay? So they want us to answer they we want to answer um, how much of chemicals A and B remain after a long time. So if you think about 60 being the limiting factor, right? So if 60 is the limiting factor and these boxes right here have to be the same amount, then what will happen is each one would be worth have 20 grams in it because the limiting factor of C is 60 grams. And so with A0, we originally had 40 grams, right? So there will be zero grams left. And then for B0 being 50, we'd have 30 grams left. And that's after a long time. And so that's the answer to that last question. Cool, cool? All right, so I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this show. And if you like what I'm doing, hey, hit that like button and please subscribe. Bye.